Are we ready? We're ready. All right. Dad Gene. Dad Gene. NPR the other day. It was a, uh, uh, oh, what's his name? Lurie. Lurie Mantle. Lurie Mantle. Lurie Mantle. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah and, the, and I don't know about uh, what Kaepernick is doing, but do you, what do you guys think? I'm going to open it up to you. That was, that's an actually uncanny impersonation. <laughs> Thanks. Um, it, uh, there, there were these white people calling in. I'm oh, assuming God. there were white people just hearing from their voice. And like, okay, that's racist. Okay, that is racist. <laughs> You're right. Um, and like the, the, the comment that you kept hearing that I kept hearing was, or, you know, it was variations on, well, why doesn't he do something positive? Like, why is he just sitting there? And I'm just like, fuck you. Yeah. It is not his job to make you feel comfortable. No. Like you, I don't, you, it's, he's not he doesn't need to say anything yeah he can sit there and fucking protest silently as much as he wants yep and like for you to come in like it's just pure it's just pure ignorance that would that would like they're objecting to a black man taking a stand yeah exactly that's all they're objecting to. and it is not the job of the oppressed to comfort the bystander there you go period yes no i totally uh i totally agree with that it was hard to listen to because i i just feel like wow there's a lot of people out there who think that they have the right to to have an opinion Mm -hmm. and i'm sure none of them like would consider themselves racist but like all white people need to consider themselves racist right now. Why do you have an opinion on a football player not standing up for the national anthem? You don't, no one has an opinion on that. No one really gives a shit. How could you give a shit about that? Like, if you really care, if you really care, if you're like, the national anthem is sacred and Ugh. every single individual must stand up for it, then you're fucking, like, you're probably emotionally retarded and you exactly (laughs) don't get what america is founded on or like you precisely don't get it you just don't like i I feel like you just don't i just don't see how you could care i don't see how you could care this is like what like what if it what if the the what if we changed the rule and it was everyone had to stand up for oops i did it again (laughs) and then they didn't someone didn't stand up for oops i did it again and you're like everyone stands up for oops i did it again like yeah what do you what are you complaining about with that action exactly it is so minor and of course, their response always would be, "Oops, I did it again, uh, over and over and over again." But the problem is the it's the amosexual church of Jesus the American. Wow, that, uh, that's a lot of words. Yeah, it's a lot of words, and and it is this the disciples of this church, yeah. that are the goddamn problem who who mistake patriotism for religion. But I, well, okay, but here's my theory: is that I don't even think they. I don't even think they have that patriotism. Like whatever's upset inside them about it uh-huh. is strictly within the current news cycle that they like feel they feel some connection like they they have to have a thought on this thing that's happening and then they like listen to things and take those thoughts and put them in their head and then regurgitate them. Mm-hmm. But like in another week, they're onto something else or it's a goldfish in a fucking fishbowl, like swimming from one end to the other and has no idea what happened last week. That's what America is trapped in. And the, and the narrative always is that my group is getting the shaft and no one is talking about it enough. Uh, in terms think- of the white response to this the ugly white response is always like well no what about my patriotic christian family family centered life and everyone's mad at me because i hate everybody else wait what who said that there's (laughs) there's there's this underdogism james woods he's a conservative i know did you see true believer where he was smoked pot and had a ponytail i know i thought he was one of us i I love james woods i I think he's a great actor too yeah him and like cal Kelsey Grammer? Yeah, that What's guy. That, that guy's a little bit of a wait. Let me catch up to you. Problem, problem, ah, monkey. Problem. Monkey. Um, we're drinking three twenty nine lager. Mm. Uh, we're back. We're back with uh, Dad Jeans. The bicentennial episode number seventy six. Number seventy six. Yeah, that's right. You guys go out and uh, root for the country. <laughs> 200 years 200 years of dad jeans 200 years of dad jeans i remember one of my first memories is of the bicentennial on the charles river and i was mm. one year and 10 months old wow you re- do you really think that's a memory you have or do you think that's a memory that's been implanted in you well i have like one retina burn but it might have been a subsequent july 4th is that, that your first memory 
Yeah. What I is mean, it? chronologically. What is it? I'm standing yep. on the Charles River. Uh huh. And there's a girl uh-huh. with a bike with uh-huh. streamers coming out of the uh, handlebars. Yeah. And she has a big 76 sign, and we're surrounded by people because it's 76. Yeah. And that that was your that was your memory. Yep. And then what happened? Did some did someone fall in the lake? Uh, fast forward and get set on fire by fireworks uh, but by the Charles River because back then it was very dirty. I want to know what 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 this tells us about your psyche. I'm not getting enough from that image. Okay, here's another one. Okay, my parent. This is my next my earliest memory after this. Mm-hmm. I'm three something three and change. Yeah. Uh, my parents are having lob- a lobster dinner. Uh-huh. And they're each sitting at what is otherwise like a smallish but normal sized dining room table that would seat six. With the, the not not the communists are not with them. No, nope. They're eating alone. Farmer uh, Dave, or, like a romantic who's, dinner. Who's the naked Bob? Who's the guy? Who used <laughs> naked to hang Bob out? and Farmer Dave. They were outside <laughs> looking through the window and just sort of panting. <laughs> <laughs> that, that lobster looks delicious. <laughs> <laughs> and my dad would have to go outside and shoo them away over and over again. Mm-hmm. And uh, they were sitting on the corner, very close to each other. Okay. I'm standing behind a rocking chair on top of my teddy bear, Beep Beep, who is actually only 15 feet behind you in Oscar's closet. I'm not going to look. And uh, it's through a wall. I can't look and through a wall. And <laughs> I, uh, I look up. Yep. I'm standing on Beep Beep. I'm standing behind the rocking chair. I'm three. I look up. My dad says something. They both laugh. Oh, and they're having a romantic dinner, and there are candles and lobsters. And that's your second that's memory. My, that's really my first memory. Okay, that's um, that has something to do with uh, the horrible. I don't know. I got nothing. But what's your first memory ever? I don't know. Uh, okay, well, do you remember walking into this house tonight? Mm, barely. <laughs> yeah, because I pinched it in my finger. Okay, so that might be the first thing. Okay, yeah, that was my, that's my earliest memory. <laughs> I don't believe any of it happened. Uh, I don't know. I, I really don't know. That was a very different Jeffrey anyway. I, my I gate have, has a I, trick and no one knows it except for me. I learned it or you taught it to me. Well, but then you pinched your finger. Yeah, but I, cause I had one, I was carrying loads of garbage in my hands and I was opening your gate with these fingers. Uh, Jeffrey is uh, pointing us at a sixth and seventh finger. I never realized he had on his left hand. Yes. I am very dactylic. <laughs> Oh, what? Um, I don't know. Is that a you, word? Yeah, it means you have hooks on your elbows, oh. like a pterodactyl. <laughs> well, I, I got those too. <laughs> <laughs> um, Brendan, shall we decompress, mm. regroup? Mm-hmm. We had a spectacular two weeks ago. We did. Um, one thing I want to say, I have a compunction. I do too. Uh, we ended up having, it may, it may be in the same compunction. We'll see. Uh, Tiffany Hudson and Mike Stelmar. Stelmar. Uh, wonderful listeners. Thank you, guys. They called in. Uh, with a string of voicemails, and they, <laughs> we ended up having to cut them for time. We, we, they kind of made us spend an evening with them. <laughs> yeah, we. It was fun. It was like we were at their party. Yeah, they um, kept just redialing, picking up yeah, where they left off. Brendan and I made s'mores and listened to those voicemails. <laughs> um, but uh, one of their friends, we had. They had two friends who also offered their mm-hmm. com- their compunctions, and I think Brendan. The problem is that those were the only two non listeners in the entire bunch. That's true. And we just alienated the only two non listeners who to probably contribute. tuned right in and were like, "Sweet, right. this is that podcast I'm going to be on." Mm-hmm. Oh, sorry guys, terrible. Maybe we'll, and I say sorry guys as if they're still listening, but no one no, in that position anymore. would ever listen again. Maybe uh, we'll we'll rescue them from the dustbin of courage oh, sometime. Let's do that. Actually, we could do that. Yeah. Yeah, um, but uh, one of their friends, his his spite was Daniel Craig, <laughs> and I fucking hate Daniel Craig. Really, I am so on board with that. Yes, I hate that. Oh, let's let's double click on this. I have two things to say about him. I um I read this. I started hating him when I read this interview with him and Harrison Ford, who are two of the most unpleasant humans I think on earth. Wow, uh, totally humorless. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> They're talking about so so Daniel Craig got married to Rachel Weiss. Is that who he's married to? Yep. Weiss. <clears throat> um both. And he had this or he, he's wearing his wedding ring or something, and the the or he tells this story about his wedding ring, and the reporter says something like this is an interview I read like Entertainment Weekly or something. And the reporter says something like, Yeah, so you just right recently got married. Tell us about the wedding. And he's like, I don't talk about that. It's fucking private. Like he's just like all pissed off, and he like would had just come from telling a story about his wedding ring, <laughs> and like just this the the sourness of this guy, yeah, and like he just seems to like as as Bond, he is so not, 
Yeah. Bond is fun. He's not having a good time. Bond, yeah, he should be having a good time. And I re- I recognize it's the reboot, so it's maybe... This, it, in the grim years, because of the Batman had all of the grimness and the saturation pulled out, and then Zack Stupid Snyder pulls all the saturation out of Superman. Everything's desaturated and grim now. Right. But not for much longer, hopefully. That yeah. was because of 9-11 Let's and because of the Kelly. Bush years. Hollywood was like, oh, yeah? No saturation. You know about, uh, you know what, though? Uh, the Marvel movies are not desaturated. They're very colorful. They're unwatchable, uh, except I haven't seen them because I literally can't watch them. What do you mean? I don't know. Did what are they about? Help? I'm sick of the superhero thing. Uh, I liked uh, the first Iron Man. Oh, yeah, it was fine. I enjoyed that movie. That felt like a breath of fresh air. Sure, because that guy is, is like imminently viewable. Don Cheadle? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I assume that's who that, you're I think about. it was, wasn't Terrence Howard in the first one, or was it Don Cheadle in the first one and Terrence Howard in the second one playing Don Cheadle as Lieutenant McGillicuddy? It was Clint Howard in the first one, actually. Ah. I thought, was it Bootsy Collins in the first one? Bootsy, I think it was Bootsy and uh, Spud Webb. Oh, Spud if Webb. I'm not mistaken. Who, who is, they, you can they still they dunk. It off. Yeah. Can, even though he's 5'4, yeah. you can still dunk. Exactly. And he was, he was, uh, he was Iron Man's chief rival, Bronze Man. Oh, the dun- uh, yeah, mistaken. Bronze Man, the dunkster. Yeah. <laughs> the dunkster. <laughs> the, sal- the salad eating dunkster. Salad eating dunkster. I don't know where we're going with that. But anyway, yeah. I, S- what S- do you S- have D. to say about Daniel Craig? I'm very concerned about the moles on his back. Oh. Um, I don't You've know if you saw the girl with the dragoon tattoo. I did. I quite liked it, even though I d- despise those books. I saw the Swedish version. Which and, I've heard are great. Is oh, great. fucking great. Yeah. And then I saw the American version. Yes. And uh, the, the American version is almost as good. Yeah. It's actually kind of a shot for shot remake. Like they basically oh, really? like followed the, it's, li- it's, it's almost exactly the same thing. Mm. But yeah. I like David Fincher. He does good stuff. Why did they not? Speaking of desaturation, the hugest movie book series in uh, in forever. Why did they not continue with that? Yeah. Oh, because he can't get out of his James James Bond contract. Because they get and and they keep the public keeps tweeting that Idris Elba should play James Bond, and then the Broccoli State gets mad because he's uh, you know. Wait they they don't allow him to be in other movies. I'm sure not. Huh. Except for that one. He slipped that in between James Bonds. Huh. I bet. I don't know. I could be wrong. Okay. I want to be wrong. My point is... I bet David Fincher doesn't want to do it because he had to work with Daniel Craig, who's a fucking oh, asshole. Oh, yeah. And t- you take off that guy's shirt. There's a scene where he's sitting in a bed in the in the Sweden, in that place, mm-hmm. in the estate, and his shirt's off, and his back has like archipelagos of brown weirdness. Ugh. Harry moles. Harry moles. Mm. Maybe, he got like, those, maybe he got those surgically implanted for the part. Oh, that he that character strikes me as a Stieg. Was his name Stieg something? I don't know the character. Stieg. Anyway, no, it was written by Stieg Larson, but I can't Larson. remember the name of the character. Oh, uh, uh, Landa, fuck that guy. Did you read those books? I read the first like chapter of the first one, but I already knew what was going to happen, and so I was like, "Wait, I saw both movies. I might not like read this." Six hundred pages long each. Yeah, and they could easily be two hundred, like with the amount of story he tells. Like there, there, there are. Pages upon pages of that book where it's like he went to the window and lit a cigarette and looked out upon the falling snow. It was falling <laughs> on the ground in what? front of the cabin. What? There were mysteries out there in the snow. He You're wondered s- as he smoked his cigarette what those mysteries could mean. <laughs> This is not bad, Jeff. Thank you. <laughs> so what you're saying is, is a bit of shoe leather. There is uh, nothing but. And and it's also like in every every scene, it's like, he's like, why do men brutalize women? <laughs> like, he's just like super like upset about it all. Like yeah. something, it, it's almost like he doth protest too much. I have a feeling Stieg Larson might have had some issues. He was, he was very driven by his message. And he also subsisted on Big Macs and Marlboro Reds the entire time he was typing so that he finished literally the last word yep. and like died. That's why he died? Because it was the Big Macs and the cigarettes. Oh, he Big did Macs supersize me, but not didn't film it. Oh, poor Stieg. Now poor Stieg. Bad. And he was so anti-racism and like he was a lefty like us. Yeah, he was a... It was a uh, European lefty though, which is a different breed of animal. I find mm. they 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 might venture a little bit 
more uh, militaristic than we do. Well, in Europe, it's all sorts of screwy. Like Barack Obama is basically center right. And then, you know, George Bush is way to the right towards fascism. And so America is way to the skews, right? way to the right. Whereas in Europe, le- left is actually like it's more fringe. The most conservative people in Europe are m- much to the left of Democrats here. Yes. Well, that's true. So their whole spectrum is all, well, all the but way in a, over in a the weird left. yeah, in a weird in a weird fascist way. <laughs> <laughs> they I mean, like, they definitely hate other people and hate people of different colors and stuff yes, still. And people from other countries. They just are infrastructurally fiscally uh, liberal. Um that do you have any more compunctions? Wait, you had two things about Daniel Craig, didn't you? Uh the first was the moles. And he oh, the second thing is that he looks really good in bell bottoms. Oh, yeah? Yeah. When have you seen him in Bell Bottoms? In uh, that movie Fleet Week. by Steven Spielberg called Munich. Oh, about the, Minach. You know, I, I, was in, I was in the city of Munich yes. for 24 hours Okay. before I knew I was in Munich. Really? Because I walked around being like, I can't believe, this city is huge. Yeah. I can't believe I've never heard of Munchen. Oh, Brendan. <laughs> Munchen, you thought you were in. I thought it was in Munchen. Wow. And um, then we were driving around the Viennese woods. Have I told the story in Dajeans about seeing the Einbahn signs everywhere? Uh, there are all these signs. I think so. Oh, I know. Right, whatever. Anyway, you look back, everybody. It's a very no, funny no. story. Go ahead. It. Well, there are all these signs. We had a day to kill. We were driving around, all these signs with arrows pointing to this place called Einbahn. And we we're like, where the fuck is Einbahn? And we kept seeing signs for it. Yep. And we couldn't, we'd, we'd drive down the road and then just like lose the trail. Yeah. And then we'd see another one and we'd drive down that road just in the nick of time. Yep. And then we came upon like a kind of mediocre view and we're like, there is way too much signage for this mediocre view. Uh-huh. Uh, and then we came to discover that Einbahn means one way. Oh. And looks exactly like a one-way sign, except oh it's in German. And I hope you were going the right way when you saw the Einbahn signs. Uh, who's, who, who knows? Who knows? You could have been maybe like left, beep, beep. left is right over there. Yeah, exactly. As we were trying to get away from Einbahn, go the opposite right. way of all the Einbahn roads. Right. From that view. Amazing. Of Hunstrasse. Um, what's Autobahn? Uh, exactly. Bahn. Way. Well, Carway, yep. Mm, car Interesting. Way. Well, good for you. Yeah. Um, do we get into our things? Do you oh, have any I more? Have a compu- I have another. I have a compunction. Okay. You know, last week during the spectacular, Jeffrey, we've done seventy fucking six of these, including tonight. I'm a little depressed about it. Are you? Eh, it's just, see. just watching every every episode fall like a Led Zeppelin, <laughs> and not the band Led Zeppelin, which soared to great heights. Uh, despite their name. Yeah, exactly. Should we name our podcast Don't Bother Listening? <laughs> Don't Bother? iTunes would probably give us more attention. Yeah, no, every, uh, yeah, yeah, I, I tweeted this nice message to iTunes podcasts. Mm-hmm. It's just like, hey, thanks for all the support, you guys. Nothing. Nothing. <laughs> I'm just well, like, they, they were busy we removing features attention? from their fucking phone. I guess that's what it is. Yeah, yeah, get, get rid of those. No one wants those fucking headphone jacks they, they should probably get Who rid needs of the them? screen too yeah i know exactly why don't we just why don't we just feel it we just feel the phone calls. yeah it's, it's just vibrate when something is important mm. and then we have to figure out what it is in our daily life and then you put it up to your neck yep and you hear you kind of hear it going through your flooding into your bloodstream and then tim cook enjoys prima noctare with your wife tim cook that guy Mm. They jumped the shark when uh, when our good friend uh, Steve Jobs died. Yeah, and you know I don't think he was any fucking great shakes that guy. But he was just a mean boss. Yeah, somehow. So, so they were like scared of him. And Tim Cook is everybody's best friend, so everyone's like, "Well, let's phone this one in." Yeah, exactly. Literally phone it. Um, what's your other compunction? <laughs> My compunction is so last week I wondered how people can wind up stupid. Like how could they can get to a point and be like, "I'm done learning. I'm not going to be curious anymore." Okay. Um, and you know I. I'm I'm going to stop short right now of being remotely forgiving of the stupid. I fucking can't stand stupid people. Okay. Um, But Mm. suddenly it occurred to me, in order to grow and become more mature and learn things Mm -hmm. and be curious. Well, our our elitist definition of what it means to grow and become more mature. Sure. Okay. Absolutely. Well, that's our base. That's what that's our base that we're starting from. We're going to uh, we're going to make it from, okay, yes. Um I would say uh, let me describe it as if you're going to if you make I'll describe it two ways. Type A or description A. 
if you yeah. keep making the same mistake year after year, yeah, that's a that's a universal form of fucking stupidity. Yeah, no matter what your okay. life circumstances are. Fair enough. Um, B, and this is where I do get elitist. If you just pursue sensations your entire fucking life and are just taking selfies and wanting you know people to be like you're cute in that outfit for your entire goddamn life yeah um i have many things to say about that yeah. there's a guy oh that, i thought that was the good that was that was what you should do that is what you should do okay there's a guy with hedge clippers yeah. running around new york yeah. and um snipping people's selfie sticks and running away wow <laughs> how awesome is that that's a that's a bold move yeah is it the naked cowboy? No, it isn't, but it should be. Okay. Does so, he, where does he keep his yeah, clippers? Exact, well, exactly. That's the trick. <laughs> that's that's tough. That is some Vegas level magic. Yeah. So it, 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 um, my point being that if you just pursue sensations and you don't move on to, you know, constellations of ideas or whatever, I don't know. I, I'm losing my thread here. My point is this. Please. I realized when uh, last week... Yeah, I was like, why do people stay stupid? Because if you learn too much and grow too much, mm -hmm. you have to accept the fact that you will look back on your former self yeah. with disgust at how stupid you were. And so that hmm. becomes so excruciating at a certain point yeah. that you just have to stop because it's more excruciating. It be obeys the law of diminishing returns and becomes more excruciating to realize how stupid you have been than to... Uh, get out of the stupid you are now by growing and becoming more mature. Okay, but what's the mechanism by which if you haven't grown past that and are looking back at how you are now and saying, gosh, was I stupid back then? Mm -hmm. What is the mechanism by which one realizes in the future, if I become smart, I will look back at me being stupid right now? Yes, if you are unaware of your own stupidity, uh -huh. how do you know that in the future you will be aware of your stupidity? Oh, we only ever look back. We back into the future. No, but I'm saying, you're saying that people stop growing because it's so hideous to look back and think, gosh, I used to be so stupid. Yeah, that feeling of self-loathing becomes so fever-pitched. Right, but if you're too stupid to keep growing, then uh -huh. how do you know you're going to think that you're stupid? I think we grow until <laughs> that point. <laughs> I think we grow right up until we're like, wait a second. Okay. If I'm, I, I'm if fascinated I by this theory. If I grow any more than this, I'm going to look back on myself and hate myself because I was so stupid. Well, okay. Here's, here's, here's my take on that. I think that's a very interesting theory, Brendan. <laughs> you look defeated. <laughs> or you're going to come over and chop me with hedge clippers. It, it, it's, it's similar to when you're losing, when you're trying to lose weight. Yeah. It, it, it's a mental game because you actually have to mourn the part of you that's going away in this like totally fucked up bizarre way. Hmm. You have to, it's, it's this counterintuitive total mental game where you uh, are becoming less of a person and you have to be okay with that. It involves a lot of self-forgiveness is my ultimate point. Okay. Self-forgiveness is much harder than just learning and it's much harder than just losing weight. However, you can't keep learning. You hit a point where you cannot keep learning and you cannot keep losing weight unless you forgive yourself hmm. um, for your past sins. Okay. I'll take that. I'll take that under consideration. I enjoy your theories <laughs> and I'm looking forward to hearing more of them, but no. Okay. But here's, here's a very, here's a very real situation though. Is it not true that there are probably a lot of people out there who we might look at and say, why are you not learning more? Why are you so stupid? Who just don't have fucking time because their lives are such shit and they have to live in the now and they have to fucking mm -hmm. do their, do whatever their job is so that they can get some money so that they can take it home and pay the babysitter and do the thing. Like, it's just oh, like, yeah. like every fucking second is just scrambling to like keep to sustain Absolutely. whatever they have going. So therefore like the time for reflection is just yanked away from them. Mm -hmm. And that, that <laughs> in fact is what keeps them the, from learning well <laughs> by learning i don't mean necessarily facts or even book smarts or any of that kind of stuff or anything like the w-e-i-r-d acronym learning what i mean is 
like growing as a human being, like seeing patterns. You ride the fucking gold line every day, yeah. and a bunch of more people. Where there are many stops before a Union Station where we're all going to get off. Right. So if you fucking get on and just stand there and don't move into the car, yeah. And every people are going to start bumping into you. So if you, as a person, don't start to be like, huh. I keep getting bumped into and jostled. I don't like being jostled, unless they do. Mm-hmm. I don't like being jostled. You're saying Ma- problem solving. Yeah. Basic basic everyday basic, problem solving. Don't be a fucking idiot yeah. problem solving. Sure. Where like, okay, tomorrow I'm gonna uh, modify I'm gonna mod this a little bit. Right. Um yeah. what, st- people stop modding and that and hacking. And that's where I'm like, okay, it doesn't matter like what right. like it doesn't it's not an accumulation of per se capital K knowledge. It's like just like making your life the easier, littlest, to, the, the yeah, littlest things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Micro adjustments that make life a little bit more smooth. That's fair. Um, and that that brings us to a good segue into this fucking this fucking Donald Trump. Oh boy, this red faced motherfucker. Matt Lauer completely giving us the television like soft news version of our I new president. It. I missed it all. I missed it, but I mean, I heard. Well, I heard it afterwards. S- and softballs. It's, abs- it's, a, it's absurd though. But like even on softballs, he's like saying the the worst shit you've ever heard yeah, come out of a person's unbe- mouth. Yeah, the most I'm unbelievable just, stuff. We're gonna get. We're gonna get these. Th- I don't. I have a plan. I'm not gonna tell you what it is. Like it's th- amazing. That that is the epitome to me of like. They just they're, they're, they just don't care. That's what that's where I fall apart. Where I'm yeah. just like, there is no logic behind this. It is a completely 100 percent emotional reaction yep. to your problems with your own father. Like yeah. that is yes. what's happening with every single Donald Trump follower. Amen, baby. There is no anything behind any of it. He could say anything. Yeah, to be like, I'm I'm not going to tell you what my what my plan is for ISIS. Like what, how can any level headed person, how can Matt Lauer just not be like, what? Yeah. You know, like what, <laughs> what are you talking about? Like hashtag what? Yeah. What? What? <laughs> what? How, I can't imagine someone saying that to me and me like being able to contain my look of just unbridled confusion. <laughs> You know, <laughs> but Matt Lauer of the Today Show only wants people to have a uh, an easy goes in your nice experience of watching him on true. television. That's a very that's very true. That's a very like that's that like why would you choose that guy of all people? He's the, exactly the king of morning warmth. Yeah, exactly, like, exactly. And he yeah. brought that morning warmth to what would otherwise have been a very serious debate in a country that sometimes is serious when the serious people are at the wheel, right? But not today show watchers sure what so get, yeah like or al roker al if, roker would have been much better yeah or you, yeah <laughs> al roker would have been amazing or john, well how about jonathan winter oh uh, john i think he's dead he is god rest him. um he would he just would have done silly voices the whole time <laughs> um but the late night guys why don't they you know like colbert yeah, i would colbert would kill have to see and he would have become very serious and actually like put it put the and screws done it him. right yeah exactly right. But so what whatever network put that fucking fuck show on did so because, like, network television, and I say this as a man yeah. whose salary is paid by it, Yes, is a fuck show. I did some work for your people this week. Folks? Yep. Really? Yep. What'd you do for them? Sizzle. For what show? For uh, their stuff. Oh, I see. Their um, <laughs> nonlinear properties. I don't know. I don't, these are words, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> we'll talk afterwards. <laughs> All right. Oh, you're I, not at liberty. Uh, no, it's a, it's a little bit hush hush. Oh, but it's just some some a vendor. I work with a vendor who worked with you. Oh, you're probably going to be blowing my words up to the size of elephants. I am now actually producing is the wrong word, but for lack of a better one, producing uh, stuff for the largest jumbotron in the country. Amazing. Where is that? Times Square. It's uh, called the Godzilla screen. Yeah. Yeah, baby. Yeah. And we own it for the next two months. You're, you have to look at Donald Trump's face and giant. Yep. You know what it is? I'll tell you what fucking stops people from learning. It's staring at MMA videos surrounding Ugh. your cubicle all tell day. Tell me about it. You're gonna they're be... so, that is the most homoerotic sport since Greco-Roman wrestling. Oh, they're just like driving their penises into each other's butt cheeks, it's right? It's so unbelievable. I yeah. 
uh, like my Kinsey number goes up every afternoon when yeah. it comes on. Yeah, you're like, and no. just men <laughs> punching the shit out of each other. <laughs> Apparently, it's a thing to have stop, an orgasm and, <laughs> and punch someone at the same time. Mm. You learned that in your frat. Yep. Um, we're moving. We're we're getting low on time. We got oh, yeah, to zip through this one. Where do we start? Uh, let's you, uh, you take the first one. Okay. Let's uh, let's do a little. Uh, first of all, listeners, thank you for coming along on the ride for seventy six episodes. We're so happy to have you. God you, damn you it. are the good ones. You are the good ones. You are the good ones. Yeah. You're the good ones. Uh, let's move on to one toe in the cool. You put your one toe in, then leave it in. You're done. My friend. Yes, sir. I have a little story to tell you. Oh. This involves... Uh, a celebrity. A celebrity. You're going to name drop. Oscar Henry Hughes. Oh, okay. And, and myself. That's better. And... Yeah. Jane. So, uh, how do you feel about... Um, uh, what's the word? Gentrification. I'm sure you learned about it in uh, that that movie that, what's, that Lawrence... The Taking Fishburne of Pelham 1, 2, 3? No. <laughs> The 70s version or the 2000s version? 70s version, baby. Yeah. On what UHF? Am what am I? Yeah. The, someone, some uh, Edgar Wright uh, retweeted the other day. Someone said, when when anyone asks me uh, who my favorite actor is, I says I say every single person in the taking of Pelham 1, 2, 3, including the extras. <laughs> <laughs> oh, speaking of which, yep. you know how I fucking hate all casting nowadays? You know where the casting is absolutely amazing, which I finally started watching the night of. Oh, you've started watching it. The eh? casting is John phenomenal. John is an American hero. He's an American hero. That He's also a to the molecule carbon copy of my brother Joe. Oh, really? Yeah, it's really it's really freaky to watch. In general, he just looks. He's like a he doppelganger pl- oh, for my brother. He plays so many different roles. Like, I know. How can that guy be the Jesus and uh, this? Uh, and well, I'll tell you. You want to know how? I got three words for you. Tell him. Yale School of Drama, baby. Really? That was four He's words. Incredible. He's incredible. Yale fucking, School of Drama. Fucking incredible. He's fucking incredible. Um, I still have my problems with the night of, which we'll we'll discuss. Oh yeah, atmosphere. I, f- I I am completely. You're on board. Into, oh, I love it. Oh, you love good. it. How many episodes in? Are Two you? episodes in. Okay. Keep so, going. Oh, okay, I see, what Keep going. I, I see what's going on here. Keep but going. like, it's such a fascinating deep dive into the world of cops. Blah blah blah. Anyway, the 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 casting is pitch perfect, and the guy who plays Box, I'm deeply impressed with whoever this actor is. Who's Box? The lead like detective guy in the first two episodes. Oh yeah, he's great. He's, he's like a sweet. He feels like a Swedish actor to me, or something. He can't like, be American because he's too authentic feeling. Yeah, he's like a Henriksen. He's like one of those guys. Yeah, he's wonderful. Wait, no, who's the uh, who's the the guy who's in that guy oh sure henry isn't is, are, who, are, who are the kids the, are they henriksons <laughs> what? are there a couple of henriksons Wait, what and then their father Sarsgaard? is a henriksen sars guard that's exactly what Stellan i'm thinking sars exactly. guard exactly yeah but they're different because there's a t missing from the younger guy who i don't know about that guy i saw him in a play on broadway and he just sort of stared at the audience and yeah fuck muttered. all them but stellan stellan who wore the scarf in in goodwill hunting oh so be it in every goddamn scene yeah uh del, del, del go back to where <laughs> what we were talking about yes oscar and jane jane okay how so, do i feel about gentrification oh yeah yeah my feelings on gentrification are this mm-hmm. uh i bought a house i know where you're going me too i am a gentrifier yeah me too and when i walk down my street i think i wish we had a pub well i saw i drive by one when i go to your isn't there one down the hill that's a dive bar, Brendan. I want a <laughs> pub. Oh, oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I want steak frites. What? Steak frites. <laughs> what is that? <laughs> you just made it so hard to compress this episode. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> if you're gonna, you know, if you're gonna have a problem with the way I pronounce steak frites, then you can just get the fuck out right now. This is my house. Go to no. Oh, oh, you know. Well, you, well, you're okay. You're okay. You can stay. I'm uh, talking to our listeners. It's so funny you just said that because that gets to okay. a spike club of mine. Anyway, so uh, we are gentrifiers, and I feel horrible about that. And in Boyle Heights, there's this whole thing where they storm open houses and like fuck everything up and spray paint the walls. Whoa, with, or, really? I, I sort of made that up, but basically that's true. There's like a task for. There's a self appointed vigilante task force trying to keep out the gentrifiers in Boyle Heights. Keep it real? Which, you can keep it real, which I think is fucking great. And they wear bandanas over their faces and they have this like bandit mentality of like, uh-huh. at all costs, prevent the fucking real estate jerks from coming in. Okay. Uh, anyway, Highland Park, as we know, is like ridiculous. And if you go to yorkandfig.com or org, um, 
marketplace on NPR did an entire like season about gentrification, about this fucking neighborhood and about the intersection that is less than a quarter of a mile to my behind right. Was it Chrissy Clark? Maybe. Roston's wife? Yeah. Mm. I heard her that, and I was like, oh my God, that's Roston's She's wife. She's great. She She's did great. this thing on, I forget the name of her podcast, but all of my listeners have to hear the this. uncertainty hour or something like that. Yes, totally. Uncertain hour, maybe yeah. um, about uh, welfare. And it's, I just listened to it on the way home. Fucking fantastic. Yeah. You but the, the magical bureaucrat. Yes, exactly. Yeah. So, so, so that was her. That's her. Yeah. Holy shit. Yeah. And she lives in Highland park too. Uh, yeah. She lives right down the road from you. Yeah. So, uh, I only met her at your bagel thing where you made bagels. Yeah. I'm sure our listeners are excited about all. I this. know this sucks. We have a friend who's on the radio and it's cool or whatever. Yeah. But she's not going to promote us. Who's she's fucker? never even heard of us. She's never even heard of her, her podcast gets a hundred thousand downloads. I'm sure. What do we get? Well, let's sponsor her podcast and then she'll talk about that. We're going to, I'm just going to be, this is going to be, I'm just going to be bitter, bitter jeans Bit, for the rest yeah, of this episode. Yeah. Bitte. Bitte. Which funnily enough in German means uh, th- th- thank you or something or please. Anyway, so gentrification. So I moved to this neighborhood, blah, blah, blah. There's a fucking pizza hut on the corner. There's like, uh, there's like break shops and I'm like, oh, the break shops and the pizza hut. It's yep. also ugly and, and industrial, but. You're new, also half a mile away from the hippest strip in maybe Los Angeles. You might be you might be right. Anyway, okay. uh, but it's not uh, half a mile is too far. I'd like it to be right outside my door. Fair enough. And a new restaurant is opening right outside my door. Oh, called Jane. Okay, brunch and coffee. Uh, and the other day, Jane Krakowski. Oscar. Yep. Uh huh. Jane Krakowski. Exo Jane. Hmm. Oh, from X Exina. Jane Pratt. What? What? So Oscar and I are at Galco's, uh-huh. and we're speaking of hip, and we're walking home. And Jane, this brunch place, they bought this old derelict house and like transformed the fucking thing into uh, what is going to be a brunch, the place. brunchiest brunch place. Yeah, this isn't isn't just a brunch place. This is the brunchiest. It is the brunchiest. Yeah. Hashtag brunchiest. <laughs> and <laughs> and, <laughs> and so Jeff, so Jeff and I, Oscar and I, yeah. I think of you as my son. Yeah. Oscar and I are walking by yep. last weekend, and I'm like, when is Jane going to open? And I look. I'm feeling brunchy. And there are heads in the window. I'm like, what <sighs> the fuck? Did it open already? Yeah. I, and we, I'm like, Oscar, get yes, off your let's do this. vehicle, whatever you're driving right now. Mm-hmm. We get off, and we walk up to the uh, door, and we mm-hmm. walk in, and it, it's full, packed. Okay. And I'm like, oh my God, Jane opened. And I'm just sort of like looking around, taking it in. However, something's weird because everyone looks up when I walk in and looks at me. Scientology. <laughs> oh, sorry. God, I hope not. Usually, usually that's the answer. I know, yeah. Everyone stopped in, what in they're doing. Angeles. Got uncomfortable. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Looked up and looked at me. Yeah, there were a lot of, there was a lot of auditing going on. Yeah, right. People yeah. were holding metal sticks. <laughs> and then suddenly a woman in a yellow, beautiful woman in a yellow dress comes out and is like, we're not open yet oh sorry this is Jane. my family uh, and then i look around i'm like holy shit actually now that i look around every single person here is korean oh. <laughs> and uh and they were uh she's she's Co- of korean uh descent uh-huh and every and i was like oh so it's not a coincidence that literally everyone here is korean right now it's uh-huh. her family right and uh then Yes. She she was like, we don't open till next week, but sit down. And she sat me down and then started feeding me a bunch of food, me oh and Oscar, oh bringing out course after course I after love course. Jane already. And it is like Koji truck, but it's it's like Mexican fu- Korean fusion a- as brunch. Brought me coffee, did the whole thing. Uh, we had the whole experience. And this uh, is a hundred feet away from yeah. where we're sitting right now. You, and then yeah. we got, she took a picture with us as her first customers, put them, put us on Instagram. as uh, like, these were our first customers. Oh my God. And then they did opened you pay? this. Or no, they just no. Did? I was like, thanks. And I took all the stuff. Wow. And me and Oscar and we like had brunch together and then, uh, it opens this weekend. Oh, uh, and it's like right over there and we can have coffee in the morning. Ask me now how I feel about gentrification. How do you feel about gentrification? Fucking great. <laughs> Fucking great. See, this is I the problem. I love gentrification. Okay, this is the major problem. Yeah. Here. I mean, it was a derelict house. Yeah. And it's next to a salon that hasn't nothing. been open what, forever. What's happening in and that house? there's an ambulance chaser after, next to that. Ambu- come on. Let's get rid of the ambulance chaser and You're maybe open give, a little you, pub. This am- ambulance chaser a nice fucking derelict house to hang out in? No. <laughs> He doesn't need it. <laughs> he doesn't need it. He's his cement, horrible looking, horrible And he's going to get so much business off of this. It's People so fucking Glenn choking Gary, on Glenn food Ross. over at Jane. I know. They're going to go right next door. <laughs> and be like, and I just choked. And get their choked. lawsuit started. There's a bone in my Koji 
taco. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. He should put out a big sign that says choking <laughs> and choking Come on, on Jane. In. <laughs> Come on in. <laughs> and it was Jane herself. Wow. It was very exciting. That's very exciting. Yeah. Um, so it's, it's, it's mixed feelings, right? Because like about gentrification. Yeah. Because who doesn't, you know, who doesn't I know. secretly want a really fancy hip Absolutely. restaurant and we're right sitting, down the road from them? We are sitting inside of a financial risk I took. Y- not anymore. Now it's Jane just fucking upped your property values by I, I know. And then, and then I'm like, I hate myself for loving the fact that this hipster restaurant just opened right. 100 feet from my house when it was Break Shops, Glengarry, Glen Ross, and Pizza Hut. I'm wanting it. We got nothing. We got nothing in my neighborhood. Mm-hmm. It's coming for you. It's coming for us. I mean, there there are there are like I, I shouldn't say we got nothing. You know, we've got plenty, but it's not. It hasn't reached Highland Park level. Like this is absolutely. There's like uh, Highland Park. The New York Times writes about as being like the most ridiculous, gentrifying, hottest neighborhood in the country. Yeah, there are restaurants with menus. That have been letterpress <laughs> designed every day. Yeah, with the that, specials. Yes, with the letterpress. Yes, the specials. A new letterpress menu. They every actually single have day. to cast a die. Yeah, to, exactly. To do the specials. That is gentrification. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. And they and they and they serve it on like an old wagon wheel or some shit. Right, and a chalkboard outside with like the best art you've ever seen in your life. Yeah, and, and the, fucking the handlebar drew. mustaches and suspenders everywhere. Yeah, yeah. No, I know, but I, I could, hate I, everything. I'd be happy with some of that in my neighborhood. I know, I know, right? I mean, yeah. that's the that's the, this is the conundrum. It Let me say conundrum. this in closing about this. But can you do that without? And then there's the car culture that drives me fucking crazy. Yeah, see, always here before that's, I got that's here. That's what you're paying. That's that's pre pre gentrification. Yeah. Um, I, I want to hear the end of what you're going to say, but um, my my question is, can you have can can they coexist? Can you have mm. the hipster white? coexisting at the same time with like what are you trying to preserve what's the what, what's the it's just, it's low rents essentially like right because people, people don't want to get yeah driven out of their homes people who own houses yeah no matter what like they either the young white hipsters like me and emily not so young anymore or people who've been here for three generations are like sitting on gold mines sure so then so it, it is about renters so and about, everyone who is well, no, because like if you don't want to lit, I don't. It's confusing to me. I mean, yeah, I mean, I think it's about like it, it's about the working poor and renters and people who don't own real estate. Who, yeah, and there needs to be a balance because otherwise you get fucking Park Slope. Right. Who would ever want to spend any time in Park Slope? It's no. a horrible place. Um, what, what was the final point you were going to make? The final point I was going to make was this: mm-hmm. private property created crime. Uh, well, th- I mean, that's, th- I'm sure I'll buy that because there, there was no, I mean, that's a very, it's a very, uh, what is it? Is it Judeo Christian? Where does private property come from? Well, in the Game of Thrones universe, you know how the Lannisters are so rich? Sure. I mean, that would only mean like private property only came from some caveman being like, this is my land that you are trying to farm and so now you have to pay me rent and the only reason they could ever convince someone of that is by fucking killing somebody okay so private property came out of violence was born of violence but like the native americans didn't have a concept of private property Uh, correct? exactly is that true or is that just our our sort of our romanticization i know i think it really i think it's i think it's true you think it's true i think but they would have territories right like a tribe would sure yeah a territory and and warring like, whatever you could yeah. just come over and be like take a big shit like i'm just gonna take a shit on your property <laughs> on your territory here i come right i might not be cree oh fair, I, fair enough but within but on the micro so macro economically they had divisions but microeconomically they did not okay uh, as far as I know, fair I'm enough. I'm sure that maybe there were tribes of where everything they had, like, was internet and everything Walmarts, was owned by the group. The, I, I, as far as I know, I've only seen a couple movies. Why don't we about know it. anything about this? We fucking that, we took. I know we're sitting on what was once on their land. Chumash land. We're, par- we're terrible. People. Do you know the story? Did I ever tell you a story about uh, about how they how Native Americans in the Washington area and the Bellingham Washington area would harvest wood planks for their canoes? Nope. They would, and it was completely sustainable. They would climb to the top of a tree, mm-hmm. hatchet 
down through the top of the tree mm. so that the very top of the tree All the way down like Kawabunga. Yikes! <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 a couple inches. Okay. In the very top, they're just making a notch. And then they would drop a couple of pebbles into the notch. Mm -hmm. And then over months, the tr this wind would blow the tree and the pebbles through gravity would just sort of separate the wood at oh, the top. Look at that. And then that patience. And then they would and then the, the Native Americans would wander through the woods and they would find planks ready made on the ground that had fallen from the top of the tree Genius. and would grow back. Genius. So they got free wood that would then grow back oh. and then they could do it again. Uh, and they just had to have like the foresight of of a couple of months, and but then eventually they had a whole industry going. They're fucking building canoes all day. Ugh, these guys from See, the pebbles. So like that's why we can't like that's why you can't split hairs on gentrification because we're all gentrifiers. Uh, ultimately, the uh, private property created crime. All right, I'm with you. Um, my one toe. Uh, I went camping. Oh, took the took the kids. Mm -hmm. Went with uh, our friend, uh, good friend of the podcast, uh, Matt Ransford. Oh, excellent. And his children, and then our brother and sister-in-law. What about your wives? Uh, yep. Oh, I see. The whole the whole shebang. The whole kit and also a caboodle. It was three families, except Matt's wife, uh, unfortunately, had a back problem. Oh, sorry to hear that. She's a lovely gal. I've met her. Yes. She is a lovely gal, and uh, sadly, she was not able to join us. It would have been a much better trip mm. had she been there. I see. Because it was shitty i'm just <laughs> kidding it? no it was great it was amazing actually where'd you and, go uh to uh lake kachuma That's by it. santa barbara oh i see so is there a lake there uh there was well there is but oh hey what's up emily hi emily um uh oh the, are we on the clock we might be on the clock at this point hey emily do you want to go to bed right now oh okay. okay um you can pee in here if you want <laughs> come join us <laughs> Uh, <laughs> uh, Lake Hachuma. Yes. So, um, the, there is a lake, it's a man-made lake called ma made by damage dams, dam, dam. Oh, da wow. Damaging. I never thought about the word damage that way. Me neither. Um, and, uh, it's at 9% of what it should be. Oh, so Jesus. like we're looking at like, like incredible amounts of this lake the, you like there were docks that were that were like seven football fields away from where the lake began. Oh my Christ. It was really crazy. It was a very ominous sign of the California drought. Ugh. Um but we brought all our tents and all our stuff and all our food and we had so much fun. <laughs> um, <laughs> it was uh no we it, 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 camping, I mean it was car camping. Mm -hmm. And the, it's the yeah. only way to go because so you get kids. What do you, you well, camping right. with, is exactly with kids, a, AKA arguing about nouns in the woods. Yeah. So how far are you going to be from your car? Okay. Um, that's yeah. camping. My okay. friend, that is what camping actually arguing is. Arguing about nouns in the woods. Okay. Arguing about nouns in the woods. <laughs> I, I'll accept it. <laughs> but, um, yeah, it, 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 the amount of stuff though, that you have to put together to feel like you're escaping civilization. Oh yeah. Like it's just, it's, it's, it's insane how much comfort I know. we still demand. Oh, I'll give you the perfect example. Okay. I have promised myself before the next time we go camping, I'm getting a doormat mm -hmm. to bring with <laughs> us because too much fucking dirt gets in the tent. See, exactly. That kind of thing. It's like, you know, I, I spent, we had a tent already, uh, gigantic like living room uh, yes like only eight, way to go person tent as opposed to the vinyl mri yeah. mo model no, which is this, horrible no this was a whole thing yeah. and especially with two kids like I, I was glad we had that tent actually yeah for christ's sake uh but um in the weeks before i spent like 350 bucks i was like my justification was eh, if we were going to a hotel for a couple of nights sure it would be 350 bucks so i'm gonna buy yeah. 350 dollars worth of camping gear so i got <laughs> Sleeping bags for all of us. Uh -huh. Sleeping pads for all oh, of so us. Oh, so this was like the maiden voyage. This is a maiden me. voyage. This oh, is the you, first time. Oh, oh, wow. That we've gone out. But you know what? Um, I will say this. There is a very distinct, despite all of that, there's a dis very distinct feeling you get from just being outside all day mm -hmm. and from sleeping outside, which is very, it felt very uh, like primal like mm. something that i needed in yeah. my life yeah i didn't realize yep until this weekend yeah 
how much I needed it. And hit, I'm like, hit that reset button, baby. Yeah. And, and we still had all the trappings of home. It wasn't like we mm-hmm. were, you know, it wasn't like we, we were without phone service or anything like that. It was still very, uh, very modern 21st century, uh, inescapable camping. Yeah. But it was still just being outside, just like waking up and walking to the picnic table and sitting at the picnic table and eating breakfast. Yep. And then walking somewhere else, you know, (laughs) (laughs) and it was really nice. Yeah. It felt good. Yes. So that was good. brother. And the kids did well. Mm -hmm. Uh, They slept well, which was huge. Huge. Um, I don't sleep that well camping. You don't the first Wake night. Wake up a lot. Uh, the second night, your body in, is a survival thing. This has been sort of proven. Mm. If you sleep in a new, you don't sleep well the first night in a new place anywhere ever. Really? Kids do, but adults don't because oh. as an adult, you have to like be well, aware the wolves are coming. of predators. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Um, okay, fair enough. Let's Wait, move let me on. give you oh. one bit of camping <laughs> advice. Yeah. Pack for the next trip at the end of the previous trip so that on at a, at uh, on the spur of a moment you can go camping on a friday you can decide to go camping and just throw the bin in in the trunk i'm already ahead of you we've got a we've got a suitcase with all of our everything we need yep then the tent that's my girl the food is the one thing that we have to to well you stop you stop at the you get grab some kielbasa on your way out of town yeah oh yeah I'll, that's really all you need is kielbasa <laughs> all you need is kielbasa <laughs> all, all anyone ever is needs is kielbasa, kielbasa. I, I wish kielbasa when I eat it makes me wish I had two mouths. Oh, I hear that. Which technically I do in your in your butthole. <laughs> you could you could put it back in the other way. Uh, is it wrong to fantasize about that when it comes to kielbasa? <laughs> because it tastes so good. It is so good. Um, we haven't been. Oh, we need to go back to the the German place. Oh, that red was, that lion. Was, that was where uh, Dad Jeans was born. At the, at red, the red Lion? Lion? Yes. It was like we had a mandate and we were like, let's do a podcast. Really? I were like, I, I'm enjoying this conversation. Let's do a podcast. Yes, we were sitting out on the... On the deck up there? Deck, I remember. Jeff. Yes. That's... Wow. That's my earliest memory. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, so because Emily's home... Yes. I think we need to uh, foreshorten a little bit. It's oh, not, okay. 9.53. Uh, oh, good. More motors outside. Let's move on to Spike Club. How do you feel about that? I feel okay about that. I really want to talk. I mean, let's talk about this. We'll we'll put this on the docket for next week. Is my I, This is for Dad Jeans podcast. I need to spend some serious time with you talking about uh, my relationship with my daughter's public school that she is in. <gasps> oh my, no, that, that needs much more time than we have tonight. I agree. Um, let me say one more thing about camping. Okay, please do. I went to the beach mm-hmm. uh, on the way out of town. I see. And this car pulls up next to me. And do you know who is in that car? Eric Estrada. Nope. Good guess. Charles Nelson Riley. Keep going. You're never going to guess. <laughs> Bob Barker. Vorhorst. What? <laughs> Vorhorst. <laughs> These two guys get out and one of them says... Would you open the trunk, please? <laughs> and the other one said, no. <laughs> and the one said, why not? <laughs> and the other guy says, because I don't need to. <laughs> <laughs> and he said, well, I need something in there. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god amazing those are, like, the, ah. those are the exact conversations they have on the road exactly. all the time but you open the trunk no <laughs> but why not because <laughs> i don't need to oh um, it was adorable brian perkins i have uh a plea to you oh and this is because he's the man for this mm-hmm. brian perkins will you make and direct the Vorhorse movie? The Vorhorse Spinal Tap. Oh, my God. He would fucking murder Brian, it. Brian, please, Brian, please. Just think please, about please, that, Brian. Please, please, I just want to put that please, in please, your please, ear balls. Please, please, please. Just think about it. Okay, Spike Club. Spike Club. I hate you! I hate you! I hate you! Spike Club! I hate you! I hate you! I hate you! Spike Club! Fuck! Okay, I have one. Go. I fucking hate it yes. when people... When, like... Okay. Okay, you're it's a you're standing at the counter and you're gonna make your salad, and uh, you spread out. You got your bowl, you got your fork, you got your fucking you know leaves or the twigs. You're doing this at work. Yeah. Okay. 
You bring your 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 stuff. Out. Yeah, I bring myself. On Monday, I bring a giant thing of Trader Joe's bullshit, and then every day I make myself a little salad. Interesting. Okay, yeah. there's enough room in the refrigerator for that. Yeah, the, in the third floor one. Okay. Yeah, everyone down there is rich, and so they eat out. Got it. Um, they don't need the I mean, upstairs with me and the and the lumpen proletariat and the union fridge. That thing yeah, is fucking packed, packed to the gills. Packed to the gills. But downstairs, where they're all accountants. Yeah. Literally, no one uses it but me. I'm so excited that you've 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 gamed out the refrigerator space. Oh yeah, in your office, big time. Okay, so then, but uh, of a day, I'll be making my fucking salad. Yeah, and and then some. And like I have to spread out a little bit. Got a lot of bags. Got a lot of uh, Tupperwares. Of full, sure. full, you got your walnuts. You got your banana peppers. Of course, you got your roasted red peppers that I roasted myself. You, maybe, wow, look at may, you. Maybe if I have a lot of uh, bandwidth on a Sunday, I caramelize an onion. Why not? Why not? Amazing. Yeah. Okay. So, you know, lots of bags, lots of k- assembly. Sure. And then some some a-hole comes for their free this guy. tea. This guy. Or whatever. And they come and stand at the counter. Yeah. And my bowl is like four inches into their like personal sphere. Sure. So I'm like... Th- their personal sphere that didn't exist until... They came into your personal right sphere. and selected a section of the counter where I already had been. Thank you very yes. much. You've you've set up your real estate. Yeah, 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 yeah. But uh, granted, I'm a white man, so I probably set up a lot. Yeah, well, sometimes you gotta spread your legs a little. He's <laughs> on the subway, ladies. When we're on the subway and we're spreading our legs, it's because we have fucking cock and balls like shoving our legs apart, assholes. <laughs> Yet we don't have vaginas, so Jesus. we can't sit with prim and proper knees together. I think we can. <laughs> I'm going to dispute <laughs> no, that. No, okay, I have a big change purse. Well, okay, I have a giant true. hog between my thighs. Jeff. There should just be like a little thing, like a little thing that comes up and like cups your your cock and balls on the subway and then I feel like we'd keep our our legs plenty closed. Oh, speaking of which, Anthony Weiner, I saw the picture that he tweeted to the other lady with of of his child in the bed with him. I didn't see. I saw it today. I heard it described. It, and he has disturbing. speaking of hogs, he has a fucking giant penis. A. Yeah, yeah. And B, the picture he sent is an advertisement for his penis, uh. but it's being photobombed by a fucking child. Oh. And I'm like, okay, that is actually a bridge too far. I was with you up until this point. I was your greatest defender. Yeah, no, that's that's rough. Get get your kid out of there. Because he was the one who said every Republican I've ever met is a subsidiary of the insurance industry. Do you remember Uh, this? I know uh, I don't, but I do remember liking him quite a bit as a politician. He was an amazing politician. Yep. He was on the floor of Congress, and he said, every Republican congressman I've ever met is a subsidiary of the insurance industry. And then he got, like, disciplined. Like, there was a many objections. Wow. And they were, like... And he had to stand there, and there's some sort of parliamentary maneuvering or whatever, and then, yeah. like, that gavel, gavel, and then, like, they had to all talk to each other for a second because he had said something so offensive to wow. the other side. Wow. And he had to, like... Welcome to England, bitch. I know. And he yeah. had to, like, wait... And then they were like, okay, you may proceed after he had been properly chastened for wow. saying something over the line. Uh-huh. And then he came back to the microphone. And he said, correction, every Republican I've ever met <laughs> is, <laughs> is a subsidiary. Of the, and it was like, That's they were like, ah! awesome. yeah. And he was great. And he's a giant cock. Yeah. And so um, one, one would like him, but he, you shouldn't put your kid in there. Don't put, don't, don't feature your kid in a picture of your giant cock. Yeah. Fair enough. What the fuck? Was, oh, yeah. Okay, so this you're, is what I hate. You're, you're, you're making your salad. I'm making my salad, and someone comes like up, Mr. and they like, Mr. and suddenly T. Cozy my, comes in there. Mr. T. Cozy comes in, yeah. and like suddenly my bowl is four inches into their real estate. Right. So I'm like, oh, and I slide my bowl yes, over, because do. I I remain you're aware, gentle, Jeffrey. Of my, yeah, yeah, because I'm aware of the kinesphere, Jeff, yep. and I move to the center of the gold line, unlike those assholes who don't learn anymore. Right. So, fucking... Anyway, you know what someone what often people say to me at this point when I move my bowl out of their sphere? What do they say? You're good. You're good. And I'm like, I didn't ask. Right. I know I'm good. Yeah. Your line is, I'm good. Like <laughs> they say of themselves, oh no, right. I'm good. Right. Don't tell me I'm good. Fuck you. Interesting. Huh. How about that? I h- fucking hate it when people it's say just you're the phrase, good. You're good. The, you're good. Like fuck yeah. you. Yeah. Don't address me in the second person when I'm doing something nice and like sniveling for you. Right. You say I'm good and we are both we both remain different people. I did not ask you to to like uh, either invalidate me or validate me. I but did not ask for this. I did something nice for you. Didn't you kind of 
No. Just in your entire like your entire like desperation as a human being to remain aware of my kinosphere and make sure I never offend anybody. No, yeah, yeah, aren't you kind of asking for them to validate you're opening the door for them to validate you by being like oh, I'm so sorry. Yeah, my exactly. Bowl. Exactly. Um from a certain perspective. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but the people who are going to do that to you anyway probably have their own self-centered perspective that they're bringing to the table. Yeah. That they're bringing to the literal table. Yeah. 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 And yeah. I'm like, fuck you. Sure. I know I'm good. Yeah. Yeah. Fuck, fuck you. I don't need your good, good, good vibes. Oh, am I good? Yeah. I, yeah. Had, I hadn't been aware. I wish you'd say that. Oh, I, I'm good? Oh, great. Phew. Yeah. I used to do this thing that was the most passive aggressive thing ever when like I would hold the the door open for someone and if they didn't say thank you i'd just say you're welcome <laughs> like anyway <laughs> just like just like because like what are they gonna say i didn't say thank you <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> you're, just like, you're welcome <laughs> oh, that is fabulous <laughs> it's, it's, I, f- I feel I, that brought back a very excruciating memory where uh yeah natalie portman was walking towards oh, me shoo. she's hmm. easy on the eye hey, easy too easy. And I come, I come through a doorway. Yeah. And Natalie Portman is walking towards me, but she's way too far for me to linger and hold the door open for okay. anybody. Any human that far. She was like 50 feet away. Right. <laughs> but she was coming through the door and I just stood there yeah, and of course waited. You did. Of course you did. And she was like, ugh. And then not looking at me, I was like, thank you. You're like, oh, <laughs> Queen Amidala. Yeah. <laughs> I happen to be a, a director of plays. <laughs> and I thought maybe maybe you'd be in my play. Would you be interested in them? Uh, wow. Well, that's good. Uh, the, I think uh, yeah, you're excused for that. That's fine. That's fine that you have I need to find her and apologize. Eh, Let's have her on dad find us. She does per- announce Celeb- her second child. Celebrities get to... They find, find their us. way. They find, find their us. way to dead jeans. Yeah. Um, okay. My spike club for this week mm-hmm. um, uh, was going to be one thing, and maybe I'll change it to a different thing. Uh, you know what my my what I hate, Brendan. What's that, Jeff? I hate this. Uh, I hate the tr- that that there are trends in food. <laughs> you mean like a stack in the middle of the plate? Like okay, like juice bars mm. like that there's there's one place that opens up and then they like serve like $13 juice drinks Ugh. and then suddenly there's a thousand places that serve $13 juice drinks yeah and now that's no. a thing that yep. we have to like oh let's just go get a juice for lunch oh i have to contend with this is like a, yeah. a thing that i'm trying to like navigate Ugh. or like you know it just opened up which is delicious and like this wait let me guess let me guess what a, a seitan bar no is that a thing it will be now. Ah, you're going to start it. Um, no, uh, in uh, Silver Lake, right by, or not Silver Lake. Um, Los Feliz. I guess it's Los Feliz. Yeah, in that um, little little shop. Near the junction. By Trader Joe's, you know. You know what I'm talking about? Oh, oh, and Hyperion. Yeah, yeah, That's yeah. That's Silver Lake. On yeah, Griffith yeah. Park Boulevard in Hyperion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That yeah, little yeah, area. Yeah. They just opened up a uh, art, like an artisanal. Ugh, I already hate it. Well, I don't think they would describe it as artisanal, but that's that's my sort of artisanal. Anything gets you a punch in the face. Yeah, no, I don't think it's it's described as artisanal, but it's a um, soft serve uh, artisanal place. soft serve artisanal soft serve. So where it has like ground beef and garlic in it. No, it's it's very n- normal flavors, but it's like homemade flavors of soft serve oh. with like the woman like makes sprinkles herself like oh, in the come, oven come on <laughs> like and i just know that this is going to become a trend soon so like, homemade sprinkles seasonal sprinkles soft serve will be a thing like so then they they can charge like on all these things it's just like taking something very normal yeah like a fucking juice that you would pay a dollar fifty for normally yep. like and now you can charge thirteen dollars for it or like yeah. donut friend is like yeah 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 which know? is right down the street yeah in like, the hipster part of town i want to like that but I just want to go get a fucking donut. I don't want to get, sit there and like m- construct my own donut out of 75 different toppings. Exactly. And then pay $7 for it. Like what's that parking meters? I think are probably going to be next artisanal parking meters, artisanal parking meters. What, what like, will be special about them? what hasn't, what hasn't been cracked yet? Like what part of the day tooth, uh, toothpaste. Okay. Everyone uses toothpaste. Sure. 
Artisanal toothpaste, bro. Why not? Why not? Well, yeah. corn nuts. You've got corn nuts coming up. Artisanal corn nuts. Yep. Yep. Well, that's a, that's that's what I have to say about life. Mm. Let's go so your wife can go to bed. Okay. So I'm, I'm sorry that this is a short one, ladies and gentlemen, but um Thank you. It, we started late. <laughs> uh no, wait. Did you did you just cut us off? No, we're back. Okay. Um we started late tonight and uh we have children and we're 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 easing into season three. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a soft launch. Um but uh call us, please. If you have any questions, yep. comments, anything, three two three four eight four four three eight three. Yep. Uh, and uh, check us out at Dad Jeans Podcast uh, on Twitter, mm-hmm. Dad Jeans Podcast dot com. Mm-hmm. And uh, do we have anything else? Oh, and rate, rate us on iTunes. Dad rate Jeans us Podcast on iTunes, even though apparently it does nothing because I no, you have to actually like drive us. to Cupertino and be like, you twenty four year old, do you decide? Yeah. And they're like, yeah. Not even that. I don't even. I don't. I don't fucking know. It's, it's depressing. The world is run by, by by mercurial. It's depressing. Tell people about us. Just tell people if, about if you don't us. mind, or don't, or whatever. Keep it to if yourself. You have friends with yeah. kids. Tell them about us. Yeah, that's it. Have a good night. Uh, my no no no. We haven't done <laughs> fatherly advice. Oh gosh, sorry. Go ahead. We have a little bit of fatherly advice. My parents in law have begun listening to dad jeans, and I want to say hello, Hank and Helen. Thank oh, you for listening. Howdy. Hi guys. Yeah. Okay, so here comes fatherly advice, and then we close the show. Yeah, fucking kill your in-laws. <laughs> what? What? Fatherly advice. <laughs> Help me, Daddy. Fatherly advice. Help me, Daddy. Fatherly advice. <laughs> All right. Kill your in-laws. What? They're terrible people. <laughs> They're wonderful. I love Hank and Helen. Oh, sorry. Yeah. I just meant in-laws in general. Oh, I, I don't see. know about yeah, your yeah, situation. Yeah, totally. I thought that was. I tried an in law joke on an on a new friend who's a neighbor, and it like went. It was weird. Oh really? It got it got weird. Uh, I'm sorry to hear. That. I need to not open my mouth ever. No, don't. That's that's good fatherly advice. Don't open your mouth ever. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Here's my fatherly advice. Okay, go for it. Um, when you're pouring tea into a teacup, yes, or any cup, or yep. any vessel really, um, but it has to have a handle, like a mug with a handle. Okay. You know how tea bags have like that th- that piece of paper and then the string and then the tea bag. Yep. And then I you're pouring it into a, a, a <laughs> and you're pouring it into a mug that has like the handle. Yep. So often, and this is annoying, you pour the tea and then it drags the whole operation into the mug as you pour the water. Yes. It drags and then like the little flag with Nightmare. the celestial seasonings quote is floating around in there, and you have <sighs> to Fuck burn yeah. your fingers and dip in there and get it. This doesn't happen at Jane's. Doesn't happen to Jane's, but here's what else. I uh-huh. have some advice for you. Oh, um, do before you pour the water, yep. put the tea in, yep. and then wrap it into the mug handle, wrap what? and then the the little fl- the little paper quote thing on the end of the string. Okay, the flag. Let's call it the flag. Let's call it the flag. Take the flag, put it through the handle, right, back up to the top, but then under the string, yeah, so that it anchors it. Right. Then pour the water. That's clever. Yeah, thank you. Is that something you uh, that they do? No, in I, places I, I, where dev- they have I devise this on my you own. Figured this on your own. Yeah. This well is done. like when you de shock yourself when you get out of a car. That's a great one. Figured it out myself. Really good. Thank you. Love it. Um, my fatherly advice is uh, to resuscitate a dried marker. Mm. Simply mm-hmm. put a drop of uh, vinegar on it. Oh. Yeah. Interesting. Yep. Noted. That, uh, that'll bring it back to life. This is a good one for kids, people with kids, because how many fucking markers have I thrown out before I learned this, this method? A little bit of vinegar. Here's the thing, though. One drop. You don't want to overdo the vinegar, because then it just becomes a, a mushy mess pile. Right. And yes, you, you, you want it to hold its erect shape. Exactly. You just need a single drop of vinegar, and that'll bring that shit back to life, yo. Yo. Done. Nice. Done. I love you, Jeff. Brendan, I'm comfortable with you. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not, not ready to go to third base yet, but I, I, I appreciate your concern and your. You, you tell me that now. <laughs> well, I, I, I was a little drunk a couple weeks ago, <laughs> and I had a I had a very different take on things. Brendan, I. L- 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 Love, love, love you too. <laughs> I think I should probably cut out the episode right during that. <laughs> probably that's all. That's all they need. <laughs> that's all they need. Uh, I love it. Okay. Good night. Well, good night. Dad!